Ben Crenshaw's The Art of Putting. Taped on location at the Tucson National Resort and Spa in Tucson, Arizona. Hi, I'm Ben Crenshaw. It's a well-known fact that putting is the most important part of the game of golf. As the old saying goes, good putting covers up for a lot of sins. But unfortunately, most amateurs don't spend much time working on their putting strokes, and that's a mistake, because improved putting is the fastest way to lower scores. In the next half hour, I'm going to give you some putting tips that work for me, and I'm confident that they can work for you, too. We'll talk about the importance of feel, and we'll cover the basics of the grip, stance, and stroke. Plus, we'll learn how to read greens, and I'll show you some practice drills. And I want you to know that I believe in learning by doing. While you're watching this tape in your living room, pick up your putter and a few balls and work along with me. If you don't understand something, stop the tape and play it back. The tape's organized for easy reference. Think of it as a book with chapters. For best results, watch the tape from start to finish. Then if you're having particular problems, say with your grip, simply spin to that chapter for a quick refresher course. If you put some effort into this tape, I believe you'll get results. Before we get into the fundamentals of the stroke, I want to talk for a moment about my philosophy of putting. Putting is an art, not a science. Let me say that again. Putting is an art, not a science. On the last day of the 1984 Masters, on the back nine, I really had the feel in a competitive, pressure-packed situation. Never putted better in my life. Short putts are long. I was confident I could make anything. But there also comes a time in every golfer's life when you just feel lost on the greens. It happens to the best of us. It happens to Nicholas, it happens to Watson, it happens to you, and it happens to me. So in my years on the PGA Tour, I've adopted an almost fatalistic approach to putting. Now, this is not in a negative sense. As golfers, we've just got to accept what the golf gods give us on a certain day. We're all trying to make putts, but we can't get disheartened when the ball finishes close. If our work leaves us with a simple tap in, we've done well. If we keep coming close, our putts are gonna drop along with our scores and our blood pressure. I like what my idol, the great Bob Jones, said about putting. Anyone who hopes to reduce putting or any other department of golf to an exact science is in for serious disappointment and will only suffer from the attempt. It is wholly a matter of touch, the ability to gauge a slope accurately, and most importantly of all, the ability to concentrate on the problem at hand, that of getting the ball into the hole and nothing more. You see, it's simple. Let's see, in a book I read somewhere, you're supposed to keep perfectly rigid with your left side in putting. My feet are eight inches apart. I've lined this putt up so that the wind will bring it back to the left, and my left hand forms a 90 degree right angle with my right. I've lined it up with my slide rule so I can't miss this putt. Boom. Folks, there's no way you can stroke this ball. I don't think putting can be reduced to lines and angles. There is no magic formula, but I do think I have a few key ideas that I think will help you. Number one, there is no one single way to do things. Do what works best for you. You need to think of the putting stroke as a short version of your regular swing. I have a long swing with a relatively slow tempo, so I have a long flowing putting stroke as well. Number two, as in any part of the game of golf, in putting it's important to have good fundamentals. In simple terms, you need a smooth stroke that accelerates the putter through the ball. The putter must be square in impact. The left hand moves along the target line, guiding the stroke, and the right hand supplies the power. Don't be mechanical when you putt. Don't jab at the ball. Be relaxed and comfortable. Number three, to be a good putter, you must understand the relationship of speed and line. Speed determines line, not vice versa. I've got two balls here and a breaking putt. If I hit the putt firmly, it won't break much at all. But if I hit it easy, it's gonna break quite a bit. So though it's critical that you develop a stroke that will roll the ball along your intended line, it's just as important, if not more so, that you develop the touch, or as I prefer to call it, the feel, needed to roll the ball at your desired speed. Remember, I'm convinced that most three putts aren't caused by bad line, 
but by bad speed. Okay, there you have it. My principles for better putting. If you master these three simple ideas, I'm confident you'll start making some putts. As I said a moment ago, putting is a combination of speed and line. So as we work our way through the art of putting, I want you to be aware of the paramount importance of touch, or as I prefer to call it, feel. If you're gonna be a good putter, you've got to have good feel on the greens, it's that simple. But feel is very difficult to define. In simplest terms, your feel is an instinct that tells you how hard to hit the putt. Think of a wedge shot from 110 yards. You can swing that club full, from 60 yards, I have to use a shorter swing. How do I know how hard to hit it? Well, I can't program my swing like a computer. I can't say, well, it's 60 yards to the green, so that requires a 75% swing. No, I've got to rely on my field to tell me how hard to hit the ball. Same is true in putting. Try this with me. Stand up, take your putter in your hands, and line up over the ball. Pick a spot 10 feet away, close your eyes, and stroke the ball. Your feel should tell you how hard to hit the putt. It's important. When you've got good feel, your putter is like an extension of your hands, arms, and shoulders. Everything moves as a unit. How do you get good feel? Well, as I said, feel's an instinct, but it's a learned instinct. There's no miracle cure. It takes lots of hours on that putting green to hit all kinds of putts. And although good feel is really a function of practice, there are some things that you can do with your grip, stance, and stroke that will promote good feel. I'll show them to you as we move through the tape. You'll find that all types of grips are used in putting. Basically, it's a matter of comfort. There's the baseball grip, the 10-finger grip that Lee Trevino uses, the split-finger grip, as Craig Stadler and Hubert Green use. Crosshand is very popular these days. Bruce Litsky and Bernhard Langer use this grip. The overlap is like the grip that you use out on the golf course. I prefer the reverse overlap in which the left index finger is placed on the right hand. My hands work in tandem. I like the left hand to guide the stroke and the right hand to supply the power. The reverse overlap enables me to extend my left hand down my target line and prevents me from breaking down my stroke. No matter which type grip you use, be sure to place your thumbs directly on the club in this fashion. Your thumbs point straight down the shaft to the putter head. This keeps my palm square to my intended line, and this in turn keeps my putter moving squarely along the target line without any twisting and turning. One more thing, grip pressure is very important. I advocate a lighter grip because putting requires the ultimate in feel. Don't strangle the putter. Hold your putter lightly, light enough so someone can pull it right out of your hands. A smooth, even tempo is what we're looking for. But when you grip the putter too tight, you're likely to hit the ball too hard. Try this at home and see what I mean. I recommend that you use a lighter grip, then let the putter swing and let it do the work for you. That's what it's designed for. There are no clear guidelines for the stance. It's whatever works best for you. Here's where a little experimenting might do your world of good. For example, Players like Bobby Locke and Gary Player use a closed stance. I prefer an open stance. The bottom line is this. You need to choose a stance that's comfortable, one that gives you your best vision, and one that will allow you to put your hands on the line you've chosen. It really doesn't matter how you set up. It's the stroke and the direction of the stroke that really count. I like what Jackie Burke says. It's better to stand off the line to one side or the other. You put your hands on the line, not your feet. When I putt, my feet are usually about shoulder width. This gives me a good base to make a smooth, flowing stroke. Width of feet is purely a matter of personal preference. Just remember that if your feet are too wide, your body will be rigid. Once your feet are set, it's important that you play the ball correctly in relation to your stance. Ball position helps determine how you stroke the putt. Now, if you play the ball back in your stance, there's really no way you can have a smooth stroke. You're gonna have to jab at it. So I play the ball well forward, with the ball up in my stance, my arm and shoulders feel free and easy. I can make a smooth stroke that accelerates the putter through the ball. Now I'm often asked, Ben, how far away from my feet should the ball be? If you play the ball close to your feet, you'll have a wristy stroke because your arms are impeded. 
But if you use this method and get results, by all means, stay with it. I just think it's easier if you play the ball far enough away from your body to let your arms and shoulders swing as a unit. I like to feel that my arms are just hanging from my shoulders. I think that this method produces the smoothest stroke possible, and that's what I'm looking for. One more thing. Most experts will tell you to keep your eyes directly over the ball, but this isn't a hard and fast rule. Since I play the ball well away from my feet, my eyes aren't over the ball when I putt. So once again, do whatever works best for you. Bob Jones had another great line about any stroke in golf. He said what's really important is to take the club back far enough, whether it's a driver, a five iron, or in this case, the putter. You don't want short, quick motions. You want smooth acceleration through the ball. I always go through the putt. There is no stopping. If you're slowing down as you hit the putt, chances are the putter head won't be square at impact. However, a smooth stroke that accelerates through the ball will keep your putter moving on your target line and your putts will go where you want them to go. Remember, you want to use the same tempo every time. The only variable is the length of your backswing. And the length of your backswing will determine how hard you hit the ball. I've got a four foot putt here, so I only take the club back to here. On a 30 foot putt, I take the club back to here. Some pros advocate using a short backswing that makes you accelerate through the ball. I think this is bad advice. If you've got a long putt and a short backswing, you're either always gonna be short or you're going to have to jab at the ball to get it to the hole. I don't believe in the jab stroke. I think you've got to be smooth. Now, how about a wristy stroke versus an arm stroke? Well, there have been a lot of great wrist putters, most notably Billy Casper and Arnold Palmer. If you putt well with a wrist stroke, keep with it. Once again, whatever works best for you. I putt with an arm stroke. My hands, arms, and shoulders work as a unit, and I think this will work best for most amateurs. A wristy stroke requires perfect timing. It's actually a fairly complicated motion, and there are a lot of things that can go wrong. The arm stroke is much simpler. I begin my stroke with a slight forward press. A forward press is simply a timing mechanism that helps me start my stroke with a smooth motion. I guide the putter with my left hand, and the right hand supplies the power, just like in a regular swing. I push the putter back and pull it through. Try it with me. I push the putter back, pull it through. Push back, pull through. That's the tempo I'm looking for. And one other thing. It sounds obvious, but don't forget to keep your head down. It's just as important in putting as it is in driving. If you look up too soon, it's gonna knock your putt off line. <laughs> This is a Willie Park Ryan Neck putter. It dates back to the early 1860s. I keep it on a wall beside my fireplace at home because I really appreciate the traditions and the history of golf. In fact, I think we can learn a great deal from studying the masters. Let's start with Bobby Jones. He had a long flowing stroke that was simple, smooth, and elegant. Bobby Locke three-time winner of the British Open, may have been the best putter of his day. Putting from a closed stance, Locke had excellent touch. He used a standard overlap grip, and his stroke was an unusual combination of wrist and arm. And on long putts, he appeared to sway into the ball. But it's not how, it's how many, and Locke got great results. Slammin' Sam Sneed was a terrific approach putter. Like most of the players of his day, Sneed putted with a wristy stroke. Today's fans, who've only seen Sam putting side saddle, tend to forget what a fine putter Sam was. But you don't win 86 tournaments without holding a lot of putts. Ben Hogan was known for a steely concentration. Watch here as Hogan uses his putter as a Texas wedge. He chops down on the ball to get it through the fringe. Hogan worked hard on every putt, short or long. But even Hogan had to use the back door on this occasion. He once said that he putted his short putts as if someone were holding a gun to his head. Folks, that's concentration.
Byron Nelson, one of golf's great sportsmen, won 11 straight tournaments back in 1945. He stays down on putts well. He accelerates his putter through the ball, and he has a nice touch on the greens. Long putts are those 25 feet and longer. Our goal here is to get the ball close so we don't have much work to do on our second putt. There's nothing more demoralizing than a three putt green. And good approach putting will give you an easy tap in to help you avoid those three putt blues. My natural stroke is long and full, which is ideally suited to good approach putting. I'm simply hanging on to the putter, letting my backswing take care of the length of the putt, all the while trying to make the smoothest stroke possible. I find it very useful to stand up to the putt a little taller, as this makes it easy to make the long stroke. When you've got a rather lengthy putt, try and imagine a large bullseye around the cup that you're confident you can hit. The bullseye should be sized so that if you hit your mark, you'll have no trouble getting down in two. And if you can two putt consistently from 25 feet and out, you're gonna cut some strokes off your score in a hurry. Remember, good feel is essential on long putts. Once you develop it, you're always gonna be around the hole. So spend a lot of time on the practice green working on those long approach putts. It will pay great dividends out on the golf course. And here's a tip that I think will help you. When you're lining up long putts, worry about the speed. The line's really secondary. Think of it this way. You can have perfect line, but if your speed is off, you're gonna have a tough putt to get down in two. But if your pace is good, you're gonna be close, even if your direction is off a bit. In golf, the closer you get to the hole, the more mental the game becomes. Let's face it. We're all gonna miss these little putts from time to time. And it's happened to some top players in some big tournaments. At the 1947 US Open, Sam Snead had a short putt of less than three feet to win. He missed. In 1970, at the British Open, Doug Sanders had a similar putt for victory, and he also missed. Both Snead and Sanders lost in playoffs. Those little putts can be very costly. From eight to 10 feet on in, the putt becomes a 70-30 proposition. 70% on line, 30% on field. So line the putt up carefully and then don't look back. Trust your first instinct and stick with it. Indecision will kill you. Also, don't guide the putt. That usually means disaster. Think about your stroke, not the hole. Give the putt a smooth stroke and accelerate through the ball. On short putts, the tendency is to baby the stroke, and you just can't do that. You must be firm to keep the putter head on line. Good concentration is a must, and you must stay down on the putt. I like to think of Gary Player. On short putts, he concentrates so hard that he doesn't look up until he's heard the ball drop. Quoting from Bobby Jones again. The best way to accomplish this is to decide upon the line to the hole and to determine to hit the ball on that line and let it go hang if it wants to. In other words, make up your mind and give it your best shot. As Jack Burke, a great putter, likes to say, worry about what's gonna happen here with your stroke rather than what's gonna happen at the hole. I've spent a lot of time on this tape showing you how I do things. My grip, my stance, and my stroke. Let's take a moment and look at some other styles. Arnold Palmer's bold putting style helped trigger the golf boom of the 60s. This short putt gave Palmer victory at the 1960 US Open at Cherry Hills. Famous for his knock-kneed stance that kept his body rigid, Palmer used a wristy stroke. His philosophy was never up, never in. He wasn't afraid to run his putts past the cut. And when he was in his prime, he didn't miss many coming back. Like Ben Hogan, Gary Player was noted for his concentration. Like Bobby Locke, he used the close stance, and like Arnold Palmer, he was an aggressive putter. His stroke was wristy, almost a jab, but he could knock him in from anywhere on the green.
In my mind, Billy Casper ranks right up there with Bobby Locke amongst the game's greatest putters. He had a surgeon's touch. He used a mallet putter and he had a wristy stroke that popped the ball into the cup. Jack Nicklaus is the best clutch putter I've ever seen. Jack putts with his elbows out and his head behind the ball for better vision. Like all the other great putters, he has superb feel. Jack is the master of the 15 to 20 foot putt and he's hold more than his share. Finally, let's take a look at Lee Trevino. Trevino and I have similar styles. We both use an open stance and put our hands on the line, not our feet. Though Trevino has a lot of fun clowning around on the golf course, he's another tough clutch putter. Trevino accelerates the putter through the ball, and his putter is square in impact. We learned a lot from studying the styles of these great players. And if you go out to a PGA tournament, I recommend that you watch such stars as Tom Watson and Savvy Ballesteros. These guys are great putters, and you can learn a lot by watching. Reading greens is not the easiest thing to do. Even a Savvy Ballesteros will occasionally misread a putt. But even if you only play on weekends, you can develop the basic skills for reading putts. Study the green carefully. Determine your speed first, because that in turn determines your line. My pro-am partners will often ask, Ben, how much is this putt going to break? And my response is always, how hard are you going to hit it? So when lining up your putts, always think speed first, line second. Now here's some tips on reading greens. First and foremost, always be alert. When walking up to the green, take note of your surroundings. If there's a body of water nearby, your putt will generally break towards the water. If the green is elevated, it will generally drain well, making it firm and fast. If the green is set in a depression, the reverse is true. If you play on Bermuda greens, you must determine which way the grain is running. Going with the grain, your putt is likely to be faster than it is when you're putting against it. How can you tell which way the grain is running? Well, if the grass between your ball and the hole is shiny, you're probably putting with the grain. If the grass is dark, you're probably putting against it. As you walk around the green, you can feel the firmness of the surface with your spikes. And this should tell you a lot about the speed of the putt. And pay attention to your playing partners. Now study your own putt from in front and from behind. Your job is to accurately determine the slope of the green and how it will affect your putt. So get down and low. You'll get a much clearer picture of the slope if you look at it from a variety of angles. And I always play the high side. That is to make sure I play enough break. As I stand over the putt, I try to visualize the entire path the ball will take from the time it leaves my putter until it drops into the hole. To illustrate this point, I've left the flag in the cup. But never do this when you're playing. If you hit the pin, it's a two-shot penalty. Now I find that most golfers are too line conscious and they think of the line as a quarter inch track from the ball to the hole. But don't forget that your ball can fall in from anywhere around the cut. So your line isn't a line at all. It's a lane that's as wide as the cut. If you get your ball rolling down that lane at the right speed, you're gonna make some putts. Which brings me to another point. How hard should you hit your putts? On fast greens like those here at Tucson National, I want to hit the ball just hard enough that it dies into the cup. On slower greens, I can afford to be a lot more aggressive. So I'll hit the ball with sufficient speed for it to roll a few inches past the cup. Finally, don't be afraid to trust your own judgment. Indecision results in missed putts. After you've made up your mind, give it your best stroke and don't look back. Many weekend golfers warm up for a round by dropping a few balls four feet or so from the hole, hitting a few short putts and racing off to the first tee. 
In my opinion, that's almost counterproductive. That's the worst possible way to achieve that smooth stroke that you're looking for. First of all, the least you can do is arrive a little earlier to let your nerves settle down. Don't rush through your warm-up. Don't, and I repeat, don't start with those short putts. When you miss these short putts, and you often will because you're not properly warmed up, it hurts your confidence. Start out with longer putts in the 20 to 25 foot range. Don't worry so much about your line. Just concentrate on making a good, smooth stroke. Work on developing your feel. Until you feel comfortable with your stroke, you might even putt with your eyes closed. I remember a tournament in college I was playing with Tom Kite. Earlier in the round, Tom was having trouble with his putting. He just didn't have much feel. So during the round, he putted for a few holes with his eyes closed. He'd line up and close his eyes and stroke the putt. It was Tom's way of trying to get his feel back. Now, I don't recommend you try this on the golf course, but it might help you warm up on the practice green. After you feel comfortable on your long putts, only then try your short putts. I recommend that you spend at least 10 to 15 minutes on the putting green before each round. For too many people, practice is drudgery. You need to make it fun. In putting, I recommend that you play games with your friends. Games are extremely beneficial because you can work on your long putts as well as your short ones. The conditions are realistic, and you have the added pressure of putting against someone, just as you would on the golf course. Some of the more popular games include stymie, in which you lose the hole if you hit your opponent's ball, hole in one, a game in which you can only win the hole with an ace, 18-hole match play and 18-hole medal play, and closest to the pin, a contest in which you try to outlag your opponents. Now here are some drills to work on when you're alone. If you're having trouble with your stroke, just try a few putts without putting in a hole. Just putt to an area. This is great for developing feel, and you'll be surprised at how quickly your stroke comes back because the tension's gone. Hit lots of long putts from a variety of angles. And as I mentioned in the preceding chapter, you might try hitting a few putts with your eyes closed. Once again, this is a great exercise for promoting feel. Hit some putts with just your left hand. Remember, it's the left hand that guides the stroke. Putt at a coin or another small object. If you can get close to a quarter, you won't have much trouble with a regulation-sized cup. If you have access to a home video camera, have someone shoot video of your stroke. This will help you analyze your putting. Plus, have someone take video of your stroke when you're putting well. This will serve as a reference to help you solve any future problems. To putt well, you should hit your putts on the sweet spot, and finding the sweet spot is easy. Hold the ball and putter in this fashion and tap the ball against the putter face. When the face doesn't roll or twist, you've found your sweet spot. If you hit your putts on the sweet spot, you'll get a true roll. As another key to improve putting, I recommend that you keep a diary of your rounds. Chart your putts, both the number of putts per round and how you hit them. If you find that you're consistently pushing or pulling the ball, it probably means that you're hitting the putts off center. If you push the ball, you're probably hitting the ball off the toe. If you're pulling the ball, in all likelihood, you're hitting the ball off the heel. Here's a great way to find out where you're hitting the ball in relation to the putter face. Harvey Pinnock, my teacher and one of the truly great teachers in all of golf, taught me this trick. Take a can of talcum powder and sprinkle it liberally on the back of the ball. Put the ball and then look at the putter face. The white powder will tell you where you hit the putt. Finally, let me say a word about all the practice devices that are on the market. In all candor, I think that grooving your stroke with tripods, tracks, or other mechanical gimmicks is a waste of time and money. Yes, it's helpful to have good mechanics, but it's more important to have good feel. The quickest way to good putting is lots of hard work on the practice green. Many of you know that my biggest hero in golf is Bob Jones. Winner of the Grand Slam in 1930, Mr. Jones was one of the greatest golfers ever. He was also one of the game's true gentlemen. He was a great player who had a clear understanding of the fundamentals of the swing. You'll find his ideas throughout this tape. After he retired from competition, 
Mr. Jones made a series of instructional films called How I Play Golf. Featuring many Hollywood stars, these films were as entertaining as they were informative. Time won't allow us to present the entire film, so we've edited some clips together. This film on putting features actor Frank Craven and comedian Joey Brown. Yes, and that makes the situation entirely different, too. Oh, boy. Ha, <laughs> ha, Oh, boy. <clears throat> nice day. Don't forget to box the ball. Well, wait a minute. You want to give me this thing? Give it to you. Sure, is what I want. You mean conceited? Yeah. I made mine, didn't I? Frank, I want you to know Bobby Jones. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Jones? Glad to make you, Mr. Craven. Glad to know you, sir. Did you see what happened over there? Been in dead with hard luck. Mm. Just that long. The big buzzard wouldn't give it to me. Well, you know, the object of the game is to get the ball into the hole. Those little short putts are just as important as the longer one. You uh, miss many like that? Well, I miss a good many, but I practice hard on them. You do, eh? Mm. The little ones, too? Certainly. Want to do me a favor? I'd like to. Come on over here and show me how you do those things, will you? All right, I'll be glad to. Don't you say anything to Joe? How to work. Come with us, Dick. No, thanks. I'll see you at the clubhouse. All right. Now let's start with a short putt, like the one you missed a moment ago. All right. Wait a minute. How do you hold your putter? All right. Same as I do the rest of my club. Overlapping grip. I used to do that myself. But several years ago, I made a change in my putting grip, which has helped me a great deal. I'll do anything that's going to help me. Here. This is my ordinary grip with every club except this one. Overlapping in the way you see here. In putting, I turn my hands until both thumbs are down the top of the shaft. And then I change the overlap this way. In this position, the hands are free to move back and forth like a hinge, with no tendency to turn in either direction. I always like to grip the club very loosely in my fingers, so that there is not the least tension in either hand or wrist. It is then quite an easy matter to swing the club straight back and straight through the ball. That feels great. I always like to stand naturally and just bend over enough to reach the ball. I like to feel a little looseness in my knees. I don't try to butt with my body, but I never try to keep my body still. I like it to be free so it can move if the stroke demands it. You see? Something like this. The idea, it seems to me, is to do the thing in the simplest and most natural way. Now, after you've got a nice, light grip on the club, and a good, easy, comfortable position at a dress, then the next thing to do is to take the club back. And in that connection, it is most important that the club be swung back and not lifted. The best way to accomplish this 
is by using mainly these fingers of the left hand. That keeps the club moving low and inside the line. If the right hand is used too emphatically at this point, it results in lifting the club like this, so that a smooth stroke is impossible. What I like to see is a long, smooth, unhurried stroke which literally sweeps the ball along the green. One of the main things to remember is to be sure that the backswing is long enough. That looks easy enough to be able to do. Say, is that calamity, James? Well, this is not the original. The old girl herself been shined so much, her face became untrue. They had to have this copy made with a straight face. Otherwise, it's the same club. Suppose you step over here and hit a few. Like Steve do it. Nice long swing now. That's right. Stroke it straight through toward the hole. That's fine. <laughs> Bring me a victim. Hey, Frank! Come on, pay me that box of balls. Oh, oh. I'll touch you once, double or nothing. Okay, I'll be right there. Don't go away. Here's where I get even. I think you better leave me out. I'll watch him over here. Come on, Lou. You certainly are a glutton for punishment. Don't want to make it three, do you? Sure. Go ahead, putt. No, no, it's your honor. As usual. Listen for the clink. Oh, it's pretty good for you, Joe. Not good, not bad. You'll be about there in three. I'll give you your next one, Joe. <coughs> How is that? Oh, that was great. Oh, well. Now, see that you don't forget it. Oh, I won't. And I bet he never does. <laughs> well, just remember that long backswing. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that your putts always go up to the hole. Never, never feel like you're hitting the ball. Just a nice, long, sweeping stroke. Okay, let's take a moment to review what we've learned. When I putt, I hold the club with a reverse overlap grip. My hands work in tandem. The left hand guides the stroke and the right supplies the power. The reverse overlap enables me to keep my left moving on my target line and prevents me from breaking down my stroke. I also want to emphasize that my thumbs point straight down the shaft. This keeps my palm square to my intended line, and this in turn keeps my putter moving squarely along the target line without any twisting and turning. I putt with a slightly open stance. My feet are about shoulder width. I play the ball well up in my stance and far enough away from my body that my arm and shoulders can swing free and easy. I putt with an arm stroke. My hands, arms, and shoulders work as a unit. I feel like my arms are just hanging from my shoulders. I want a smooth stroke that accelerates the putter through the ball. I putt all putts with the same tempo. The only variable is the length of my backswing, which in turn determines how hard I hit the putt. I always make sure to take the club back far enough. This prevents me from jabbing at the ball and ensures a smooth acceleration through the putt. As Bobby Jones says, I never hit putts. I stroke them. When I putt, I keep my body still, but not rigid, and I keep my head down. These are the important fundamentals of putting. But as I've said throughout this tape, the key to good putting is good feel. I'm not a mechanical putter. I'm a feel putter. That's why I grip the club lightly and without a glove. 
No one can teach you feel. It's an instinct, but it's a learned instinct. And with some hard work on the practice green, you too can develop the feel to be a good putter. I hope this tape has given you a good grasp of the fundamentals. And if you're having some specific problems, go see your PGA professional and take a lesson. He's trained to help you. To play good golf and reduce your scores, it's absolutely imperative that your putting be in fairly good shape. Think of the strokes that you can save when you get a 40-foot putt down in two, or knock in a 10-foot putt for a par. Willie Park, British Open champion from 1887 to 1889, said it all. A man that can putt is a match for anyone. A man that cannot is a match for no one. Thanks for watching. I hope this tape helps you play better golf. But I think there's a good grip. I use the pervert, the perverted overlap. The perverse is my personal thing. Perverted overlap. It's a new grip that's out on the market these days. And I want you to know that I believe by learning what. Oh, I messed that up. And I want you to know that I believe in learning by doing. While you're practicing this tape, reading greens is not the easiest thing to do. Even a savvy Ballesteros will, will occasionally misread a putt. But even if you. <laughs> Garbage. Keeper. That's a keeper. Okay. Great. <laughs> I haven't made this many putts all year. <laughs> I'd have to go with you on that one. <laughs> I feel really ridiculous. <laughs>